well i want to go to alaska and they don't have any ships that go to alaska hey sailors welcome back to cruising as crew my name is lucy and today i'm going to be advising you on how you can choose your second ship so you've finished your first contract and now you get to choose which ship you go on for your second contract how do you choose that's what we're going to go through today but before we start i just want to remind you to click like and subscribe for some more cruise ship content but as for now, let's get into the video. <sighs> so you have just finished your first ever contract on your first ever cruise ship. Now, you'll either have one of two reactions. You'll be like, okay, I feel like I've done it. I've worked on cruise ships. I've experienced it. I'm good. Or you'll be like, oh my God, I haven't fully experienced it. I need to go back and do another contract. And if that is you, just know that you're not alone because I was exactly the same. But the really exciting thing about your second contract is you get a say in where you go. Now, just to say, if you work directly for a cruise line, so directly for Royal Caribbean, p &O, Viking Cruise Lines, any cruise line, if you work directly for them, then you don't normally get a say until you've done, a, I think, about five contracts. Whereas if you work for a third party company like myself. So if you work for Steiner, if you work for Harding, which employs shop staff for cruise ships, Starboard, work for a company that employ casino staff. So any third party company usually lets you have a say in which cruise ship you go on for your second contract. And there are a few different ways that you can decide what cruise ship you want to go on. Number one, money. So if you work in a revenue department on board a cruise ship and a revenue department could be art, spa, casino, shops. So basically any department that makes money for the company, then you will definitely earn commission, which means the more money you make for the company, the more money you make for yourself. So you are gonna wanna go on a cruise ship that makes as much money as possible. You will be able to find out which ships make more money by just talking to your colleagues, you know, your manager who will have experience on other cruise ships and also you can talk to people at head office and just say look can you let me know what ships make the most money so for example when i worked on royal caribbean and i worked for steiner i knew that ships that sailed out of alaska generally made the most money now if i'm being completely honest with you this is because an alaska cruise is an expensive cruise so if you're going on an alaska cruise you have money to spend, which means that you are more likely to but have a $100 massage or have a $150 facial. Whereas if you are going on a cheaper cruise, then you're maybe not gonna have enough money to have a $100 massage or a $150 facial. So everyone who worked for Steiner at that time, obviously it varies from year to year, but everyone who worked for Steiner knew that if you were on a ship that sailed out of Alaska, you would make really good money. So ask your manager, ask the people you work with, ask people that have worked on ships for a long time and just, you know, see what kind of money they made on different cruise ships, on different itineraries. Also, it doesn't matter what department you're in, usually adult only ships make more money. This is because there's more adults on board who have money to spend. You know, families of four don't usually go on a cruise ship to buy a 20,000 pound piece of artwork. Some do, but it's usually the older couples, you know, who are more likely to buy a 20,000 pound piece of art or maybe a nice piece of jewelry or have spa days or something. So yeah, if you can get yourself on an adults only ship, then you're definitely gonna be making more money doesn't matter where the ship is going to go um just by being an adults only ship you're already going to see an increase in the money that you are able to bring in itinerary so we all know that the main reason people go and work on cruise ships is to see a bit of the world so for me personally every cruise ship i've ever chosen has been for traveling you know i always said the, the main reason i wanted to work on cruise ships was to see the world because it's such a great way to see the world. So I was very lucky with my first ship because my first ever ship, you don't get a say. I was just placed on there. But I was very lucky because it did the Middle East, it did Australia and it did the Med. So I got to see a lot of places just in one contract. And then my second ship, we did like Southeast Asia. My third ship, we did Alaska and then Hawaii, Bora Bora, Tahiti, which was amazing. 
then went over to Australia and New Zealand. You get the memo. So you can definitely choose your ship based on that. If you know, obviously we all want to make as much money as possible, but if the most important thing to you is the itinerary, then 100% you can choose a ship just based off itinerary. The only thing I will say, if you work for a third party company, these companies work with a lot of cruise lines. So for example, my the company that I work for have P&O ships, they have Royal Caribbean ships, they have Virgin ships, they have Viking ships, they work with a lot of cruise lines. So theoretically, I have I could choose from multiple cruise lines. However, because every single cruise line does things slightly differently, they like to keep you not necessarily on the same ship, but definitely with the same cruise company. So if your first contract where you didn't get to choose where you went was on like a P&O ship, the likelihood is they're gonna try and keep you on P&O. So for example, when I was with Steiner, my first ship that I didn't get to choose was with Royal Caribbean. So my second and third ship with Steiner was also on Royal Caribbean. So I was only able to change cruise lines when I changed third party companies. But I did actually change and work for Virgin Voyages. The only real reason I was able to change is because Virgin is a brand new company and they were, you know, looking for people. But anyway, you get the memo. So they do like you to stay within the same cruise line. If you are gonna choose a ship based on itinerary, then what I would suggest is going on Cruise Mapper or Cruise TT. I will link those websites down below. And you can basically search cruise ships um, and then look at their itinerary and then you can choose a ship from that. Or if you don't really care what ship you go on, but you definitely want to go to Alaska, then you can search, you know, Juneau, Alaska and just see what cruise ships go to that port at the time that you want to work at sea. If you really do want to change cruise lines for whatever reason, maybe, you know, the cruise line that you're currently with don't have a ship that go to the places that you want to go to, then I would recommend talking to your supervisor at head office and, you know, give them a legitimate reason why you want to change cruise companies. And I'm afraid the reason can't be because, well, I want to go to Alaska and they don't have any ships that go to Alaska. Like you need to think of a business reason why you would like to change cruise companies and then they might consider it. So for example, I changed to Virgin Voyages from P&O, not because of the itinerary, not because I have anything against P&O. I really, really loved working for P&O, but I obviously did see an opportunity with the Virgin brand and I did want to work for Virgin Voyages for business reasons. And I made that very clear to my supervisor at head office and voila, money and itinerary are the two main reasons why people choose cruise ships. The other thing could be the ship life, the crew life. So there are some ships that are renowned for being like party ships for crew members, you know, or some ships that are known for being couple ships. It just seems like every crew member is in a relationship. So every cruise ship has their own little like reputation. Just for an example, I know Royal Caribbean Independence of the Seas had a reputation for being the friendliest ship. You know, all the crew members on there were really friendly. I've never worked on Independence of the Seas, but just kind of hearing through the grapevine, that was the reputation that Independence of the Seas had or has. However, I would actually not recommend going on a cruise ship for the reputation it has because as i've said in previous videos cruise ships change all the time independence of the seas was known for being the friendlier ship and that was because at that time all the crew members on there were really really friendly however by the time you get there all the crew members will have changed because people will have finished their contracts, started contracts. And I'm not saying the new people won't be friendly, but obviously the people that created that good reputation won't be there. Just like if you choose a cruise ship because it's a party ship, you might get there and all those people that worked on the cruise ship that loved to party have now finished their contract and have been replaced with people that 
don't like to party so it's no longer a party ship so just a word of warning because i do know a lot of people have chosen ships before based on the reputation that it has and then unfortunately have been disappointed because that reputation is no longer true oh so yeah the two things that i would base your decision on is itinerary and money and as i said you just have to decide which one is more important to you you might i mean i got lucky like with my third ship with steiner because alaska was where the money was but it was also where i wanted to go so i kind of got both if you can get both amazing but if you can only get one like if you really want to go around the med you're probably not going to make the most money if you're on a ship going around the med but it is like one of the best itineraries it's just so beautiful it's so chilled out so relaxed i don't know you just have to do your research but the best website i think to research cruise ships for the itinerary is cruise tt and cruise mapper as i said i will link them down below and then when it comes to making money you're just going to have to talk to the people in your department who have worked on multiple ships and see what they would recommend. I hope you have enjoyed my short and sweet video on how to choose your next cruise ship. If you have, then please press the like button and the notification bell because in the next video, we're gonna be talking about why crew members cannot sleep with guests and it is gonna be saucy, so make sure you hit the bell. But while you wait for that video, you can check out these two videos here, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.